Good evening. It's good to see all of you here tonight. I'm going to explain a little bit what, what we're going to do. First of all, I want to thank the congregation here, the uh, Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, for letting us use this sanctuary. They've been letting us use uh, rooms in this building all, uh, for a couple of years now, so we're very grateful for that. Um, the main purpose we're here is to talk about what we're going to do to further the cause of keeping the city farm as a park. Now, the opportunity next Tuesday night is to go to city council. We need a good turnout there and we encourage people to get up to during the public hearing for the comprehensive plan and make um, comments about the park, keeping it as designated as parkland and not as understudy. And uh, one thing that else you could do, I just realized you could speak twice if you wanted to next Tuesday because if you speak under during the public hearing, you also speak later under the uh, open the public comments, so you can speak twice if you want. But the main thing is to speak before they vote, if they do decide to vote uh, next Tuesday. Now, this evening, we have two particular special guests here. Uh, the uh, Two city council members from the Central District. Pat Woodbury, who has been on the council since uh, 2008, that's right. <laughs> and Dave Jenkins, who is, has just begun his first term. <laughs> <laughs> and, and both of them have been uh, spoken in support of the car, but we're going to let them speak tonight and also answer questions from you. Now, there's a something that we would like to do first. I'm going to call Lucy up here. This little song, uh, was some, listened to the radio uh, last Thursday, and there was a song that had the word river in it. And so I wrote this little song, and uh, Lucy gave me a few lines to, to, for an extra verse, but it's, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. This, isn't, this is not a solo, this is a sing-along. <laughs> <laughs> you all have the words on the back of, of your uh, program here. Well, Lucy, so, Lucy, I would like you to do at least the first verse. Yeah, first. I'll sing the first verse or so, so you can figure out how it goes. And then we'll go back and everybody will sing the first, second, and third. So it's, uh, and um, the sheets were passed out. I think most people will have them. They might not have them. Or <laughs> well, share one with the neighbor if you can. So we'll, we'll do the first two verses in chorus, and then we'll go back and repeat it. And when we do, you all join in, okay? You ready, love? Yep. One, two, three, four. Yeah. 
let's, go, let's start with the um, council members. Uh, we have a member of our group, Dale Good, who's coming up to uh, talk a little bit about the comprehensive plan. Now, Dale did something very unusual a few months ago. He went through, uh, what, what, what was it, like 150 pages of comprehensive plan and analyzed it. He's not going to do the whole thing tonight, by the way. <laughs> We'll give you about, about five minutes. I'll <laughs> yield my time. But he's, he's going to talk about the, um, how the city farm relates to the comprehensive plan and how it supports most of the comprehensive plans, except in a few areas where they contradict things. And Well, just come up and talk. Okay. And then after that, each of our council members will have just a few minutes to get up in the opening statement. You can come up here, and then we'll do the questions and answers. Uh, Doc Robin, <laughs> Van Tine. Yeah. Back to that in the corner. If you, if you need uh, any cards to write the question down, you can do that. You can raise your hand, and uh, Darlene will pass those out to you. Thank you. And who are you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> If you haven't been to city council or watched it on TV in the last year and a half, you may not know who I am. <laughs> I'm Adrian Whitcomb. Um, uh, I, 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 I had this. I'm president. You know, I had the idea to meet with this group, and somehow they elected me president, and I'm still there. They don't throw me out yet. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, what I, like Adrian said, what I want to do is just talk a bit about, a little bit about the comprehensive plan and how it relates to Riverview Farm Park. Um, in the, compre the comprehensive plan, and I'll read right from the plan itself, it says the comprehensive plan presents the big picture and establishes a guide for decision makers based on our, this is important part here, based on our citizens' core values. Uh, it's what you think. Um, the One City, One Future Comprehensive Plan, which is what the, the current uh, plan is called, uh, the draft at any rate, will serve as the general guide for development in Newport News for the next 20 years. So that's pretty important. Next 20 years, and that's why it kind of bothered us when we saw that the, um, the original draft had uh, the city farm portion of Riverview Farm Park. It's one parcel. It, it, it's not two separate entities. Why the city farm uh, part, though, was uh, uh, designated as understudy. And also in the original uh, draft of the comprehensive plan, it, they, they, there was the full admission that there were interest in doing residential development in the park. And those two things we didn't want to go through. And um, so we were fortunate, we were lucky, well, I mean, we worked for it. Uh, we, the Planning Commission voted unanimously um, to go ahead and change the designation, and it is now in the draft designated, the, the, the whole park is designated, the land use is park, and it is um, zoned as park. And so that, does that protect the park? you know, from any further encroachment by, by uh, developers or No, it doesn't. But it does set an important precedence because that's the guide for development and it says it's a park. So, um, but anybody can come in, just like if someone wants to open up a restaurant in a residential area, they can go through the process of uh, going through the planning commission and ultimately the city council and possibly get something changed. So that's why we need to, to, to really stay alert and not let this drop. And um, what I would like to see, what, what I would be really good is if, if we can get city council to go ahead and, and approve this current um, the version of the comprehensive plan, what would be really good is if the, the um, uh, park task force, which was disbanded, I'm not sure how long ago it was, uh, and it was from a former mayor, I believe. Mm -hmm. But the, they disbanded the park task force that was actually implementing. The year that Joe Frank left office, the park was 
the park task force was disbanded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was there. Okay, because the, 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 the master plan for the park was only one-third completed, and then the task force was disbanded. Um, from what I understand, funds are, are just about nil for uh, putting the other amenities that were originally planned into the park. So what would be nice is if the, the um, task force was reestablished, and that them working with the Parks and Recreation Department and with citizen input that uh, we got the ball rolling again. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there's a lot of competition for money. Everybody who goes in front of city council wants something, and it usually costs money. So we can't, if we do get this comprehensive plan approved, and we can get, um, we're pushed to get um, uh, the task force uh, reestablished, it's going to take work to find funds. Now, on the bright side, um, I, I, I've got a letter from David Yan uh, Delegate David Yancey. Can you hear it? Too? No, I'm, oh, okay. from, uh, I, I'm almost through. Uh, I've got a uh, letter from uh, Delegate David Yancey's office saying how he has discussed uh, raising funds uh, to help us out to put amenities in the park. Um, basically, the, the last line in the letter was basically they're waiting for a decision from city council. But he is... is telling me that uh, they'll support us. I also know on the um, preservation aspect, he did tell me the last time we were at the one of the Warwick Denby Business Association meetings, he said that the First Lady of Virginia, Pam Northam, is very interested in the preservation areas there. So there may be more funding coming from there. And then I think it's gonna take, I, I think Dr. Woodbury did mention before that for different causes that we need to go out and try and find some funds, whether it's uh, trying to get corporate donations, uh, uh, individual citizens, uh, it won't stop. And if we do, if we don't continue our effort, um, say the city, uh, the comprehensive plan gets approved. If we stop there, uh, then we're we really haven't gained anything. I don't think, or, or we're taking a big chance on losing what we've gained. Um, Say that again. Say that last statement again. If if we don't keep up the momentum to to develop that uh, uh, to, to develop our park into a park we want, um, then we may lose everything that we work for. Because one thing I, I've got had some notes here. They, they did take out the understudy. They took out the residential um, development out of the uh, the comprehensive plan. But uh, still, there are some statements in there that can actually, uh, how do I word this? Uh, Contradict. Hmm? Contradict. Well, uh, uh, it, it, it um, Such as? Weasel words. <laughs> What's it? Okay, yeah, there we go. The adopted Riverview Farm Master Plan calls for development of a public park on the city farm property. However, given the time frame since the original plan was developed, adopted in 1991, it may be worth revisiting and updating the plan for this area. So, I mean, there's some things in here that, that could still, it, that aren't saying, hey, it's a, we're gonna make it a park. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between the process. If you've been to city council meetings or, or listened, um, uh, nobody present here, but some people on council have actually said they want a process. And, but the, the difference is their process includes residential development it, or, or anything, not just park. And our, what we want to see is the original uh, process revisited, the one that Mayor Frank uh, uh, pretty much undid. So at um, any rate, that's, that's, uh, that's why it's important next week that uh, if, if everybody, it, it, we, I'd love to jam pack, I hope y'all don't mind, uh, the, council, the, the, the jam packed the council chambers with people. Who's and, planning and, on being there next week? All right. We're taking names. <laughs> when when uh, I was reviewing some of the old city council uh, videos uh, earlier in the week, and in December, I think it was 10th or tw yeah, 10th of 2016, uh, there were over 25 people that came to speak. Uh, when this this whole uh, issue first came up, 
And uh, so that was a pretty good number. There was only one person that spoke for developing the park, and he worked for uh, the company that gave the unsolicited proposal. And, uh, and he's lucky he got out of there in one piece. <laughs> he got he got booed quite a bit. But anyway, uh, if we you know if we could double triple that number, if 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 it was standing room only, it would be great. And um, I've had several people um, on the planning commission tell me that numbers matter and diversity matters. Uh, at, at the Planning Commission, we had, we had uh, uh, it's not just us old guys <laughs> that are part of Citizens for Riverview Farm Park. We had young, old, all, all ethnicities, and that uh, we had college kids, you know, from CNU showed up and helped, and they said it made a big difference in, in uh, their consideration of the comprehensive plan. So um, I think I pretty much, I probably talked enough here Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Any, any questions? Thank you, all. Thank you. Robert? I don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to let them give their talk. Oh, that's fine. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> would, like, would like to go to the next one? Go ahead. You're new. Oh, okay. <laughs> you haven't heard me before. So, you can have a talk more than you. Five you know, like if you're a council. Okay. <laughs> we'll get plenty of time doing that question there. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Dave Jenkins. I'm the newest member of the Newport News City Council, and thank you for having me here today. I appreciate uh, your giving me a few minutes to, to speak to you. I've got a lot to say. I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but <laughs> bear with me. You know, about a year and a half ago, when my wife started my wife and I started getting involved in, in the Newport News community here. One of the things that we did was we went out to a Riverview Farm Park meeting that you had. And I heard uh, Councilwoman Woodbury and I heard uh, Councilman uh, Burke Bateman speak. And it's been an issue that's been near and dear to my heart uh, for quite some time. When I decided to run for City Council, one of the reasons I decided to run was because I felt that your message was not being given the, the voice that it needed in our city government. And when I decided to run, I made sure that Riverview Farm Park, although you're not political and can't support anybody and don't endorse anybody, your issue was the first thing I talked about. And I've done that, did that throughout my campaign because it's something that's very important to me. It's important to me because it says a lot about where this city is going, what we value, where we see our future going for this city. Um, and I believe that although it is not a requirement that government keep its obligations when it says, like the city of Newport News did in the 1960s, that Riverview Farm Park should be a park, it's not a requirement, but it is a moral requirement that we do the right thing. As Dale said, you know, everybody who comes before city council wants something and it all costs money. I'm learning that very quickly. I'm only going to one city council meeting and I already know that. Uh, but you know, just like in your family budget, when important things come up and money's a little tight, you find a way to make it happen. And that's what our city needs to do when it comes to Riverview Farm Park. And of course, I support taking out the uh, the terminology that Riverview Farm Park is under study. I've talked to people in our city, it's not under study. I mean, it, it is in fact an inaccurate statement. Uh, the only study that's going on up there is the archeological study, and that is not a study for land use. Um, if you really wanted to apply um, the thoughts and considerations that are being given about Riverview Farm Park and consider that under study, you could put half the city of Newport News under study, okay? Uh, that terminology should simply be taken away. The next step, because this is not going to ensure that this is going to become a park, is that we need to work to fight to make sure that we have a consensus on council to be able to get the votes, to be able to designate that this will be a park and to move forward with planning accordingly. Now, some people, I'll tell you, have, well, three of the people sitting on council right now ran and were reelected, and they told the public 
There needs to be a process. Okay? I want to make it very easy for them to vote in our favor. Okay? And I'll tell you, I believe in a process myself. I believe that we need to, first of all, say that this is going to be a park, and then we need to have a planning process to make it happen. Okay? <laughs> so I'm hoping that with your support at the next city council meeting, we will convince some of the people that taking this designation of understudy out of the comprehensive plan does not preclude them from having a process and that we can all get together and we can make this a yes, which then turns into another yes, which then turns into another yes, and then a few years from now we'll be walking on a park down at River.